Hey there, Gary Jenkins here speaking about his road to recovery from redundancy. You know, folks, did you realize that in 2019, Gallup, the internationally famous polling company, did a poll of one billion workers. One billion workers. And what they found in 2019 is that only 15% of that population enjoyed work. That means 85% of the people disliked, hated their job. So what were the issues? What were the things that made people loathe what they were doing? Well, you could probably imagine number one was probably somewhere around with management and supervisors. Working with somebody you don't like working with is tough, especially when that person has some level of authority over you. The second one is peers, with the people you work with, your colleagues. Some people, I don't know why it is, but perhaps with their immaturity or their lack of self-esteem or their self-confidence of themselves, just believe they have to set up a pecking order. And they have to win, and in order for that to happen, everybody else has to lose at some level because they have to be below them. And, you know... It's just, it's just awful when you're in that kind of a situation, when you don't feel like you're good enough because somebody's telling you constantly you're not good enough. Most people are walking wounded. We come in to work someplace. We, we're not healthy, functional human beings. We may have very dysfunctional environments that we survive in, and we come walking into this dysfunctional family called a employer and it doesn't get any better there we just learn how to survive with whatever our coping skills are sometimes it's just the type of work you're doing a great number of people were looking so desperately for a job that when one was offered it didn't matter what the job was they just took it because they needed the money they needed to meet their uh, obligations or requirements or uh, needs to uh, feed the family, house, uh, clothe, children in school. They just needed to take care of those items, so they took it, the first one that came upon them, no matter how much they disliked the job, the work. Now, I bet this doesn't surprise you much either. It's the commute. Can you imagine? You spend a third of your life working. In a normal working person's life, that's over 90,000 hours that you have spent on the job. And that doesn't count how you start your day getting there and how you end your day going home. Now, they say that the average person in a large city commutes 90 minutes a day. When I lived in California... I was surprised to find that I had neighbors who commuted to a town over 150 miles away every day for work, and that that commute started four hours before the job started, which meant they did four hours, worked eight, and came back four hours. That kind of commute is devastating. And why? Why did they do it? Because they couldn't earn that kind of money where they were living. And they didn't make enough money to buy a house closer. And so in order to have the house, to let their family have a lifestyle of a nicer place to live, they sacrificed another third of their life just to go to and from work. Then there's the issue of stagnant growth. You know, everybody takes a job and they would love to have opportunities to grow and progress in the job. Employers, when they're recruiting people, are always offering that. They're always saying, yeah, we're always, you know, we have trainings and we have whatever else is going on. But here's where the dilemma comes in. 
people don't see themselves in a position where they're getting any training. They don't see themselves being able to grow in the position or progress further in the position. Or they might see it, but it has to be only if somebody dies do they get an opportunity to progress. And then there's the really sad situations where people are promised trainings, growth opportunities, promotions, and they never happen. Then there's the poor attitudes of employers. It's amazing. There are some employers that just have the strangest ideas. They have to micromanage everything all day long because they don't trust anybody. I, I once actually worked in a government facility where a new director was brought in. And the first thing he did was mount a camera in every person's office that had a feed into his office so he could just check on you during the day to make sure you were working. Oh, the job wasn't that good before, but when that happened, it became the worst job on earth. I was a hard-working soul. He even told me, he said, man, nobody works as hard as you. And I said, well, I hope you can figure out who's going to replace me because I've already found another job. Here's my notice. I'm leaving. But, you know, you just hate being under constant scrutiny, people looking at everything you're doing. Uh, it's, it's just uh, really an attitude problem from the employer. They should, you know... Really, when you think about it, you hired me. You, that means there's a level of trust that I have the competence to get the job done. I've been working you long enough. You haven't had any bad complaints to offer me. Um, in fact, that's sometimes the only thing that you know is nobody's ever complained about your work. You know? So you don't know how well you're doing. It's just that nobody's ever complained about how you're working. Here's another one that's interesting in the workplace. Ethics. You have really high moral value people mixed with people with low moral values, oftentimes being directed by somebody who has no moral compass whatsoever. That creates a real sense of unhappiness. How about jealousy? People who focus on what other people have and the gossip that goes along with that without focusing on what they actually have and what opportunities are before them if they will just go and extend themselves towards them. Now, if people are so unhappy at work, you would think that there would be just this constant flow of people leaving where they are to go work someplace else. But so why don't they? Why doesn't that happen? Think about it for yourself. Why are you still working where you are? Well, some people are just contracted. Now, the contract could be a written contract that they wrote with the employer, said, I will work for you for X amount of time, etc. And so they're just going to keep working until the end of the contract and get out of there. And if the con employer asks you to extend the contract, you're just saying, sorry, I've got something else. Even if you don't, you're just going to get out of there. But then there's other people. Where the employer came to them and said, you know, we're going to hire you, etc. But final question really is, will you stay? And you promise them something. You know, I'll, I'll stay for five years minimum. I'm old enough now that this will be the last job I work. I'll just go and be retired out of this job. People make those kind of commitments. And they will keep them because they are of high moral character. And they will do so. They aren't trying to pull the wool over your eyes. They made a commitment to you. And no matter how much they hate the job, no matter how much they hate you, they're going to keep their word. And yet, they hate what they're doing. <clears throat> There's the bill issue. You know, People just have to <coughs> pay bills. They just have to pay those bills. And if I leave this job, how am I going to do that? Because the next fear is a real fear. A fear of, there are no opportunities out there for me. There are no other jobs out there right now. I drive by, by the unemployment office and there's a large queue out front. For you Americans, the queue is a line. 
but there's a big one sitting out there. And they're all looking for work too. Every day I hear about more people losing their jobs. I can't possibly leave this one. You know, you should be grateful for the job you have. The old saying is, don't get another job. Uh, keep your job until you got the other one. And then leave. Well, sometimes there is no other job. And people really fear that. They also fear that if I do leave the job, I make enough money now to meet my needs people are going to start me over again on the pay scale. I'm going to be starting out at far less than what I have now. And then there's the seniority factor. I've worked 15 years here. I've worked my way up the pecking order. And now I'm in charge of a group of people or I'm doing this. And if I, I'll have to start all over again. I'd rather just stay where I hate it. Well, those are the things that are important. But here's a thing you may not know. What day of the week are most heart attacks occurring and what time? It's usually between 4.30 and 6 a.m. heart attacks Monday morning. Think about that.